Well, here they are. Sun is going down, which is over there. They behave, so remember they've had a week or so training on electric insides that have all had a zap. So, some bare patches. They've had a good knock over and nibble, but what they've really got to try and do is work out how to eat that part. So that's the part we really want them eating, so. But, looks like they've pulled a few out and knocked a few over. Some nibble. I haven't been out here very long, just a few hours. There's still plenty of room to go at. I don't know how many days this will last. A pretty settled bunch. We have a little fence tester. We always keep one of these. We just bought some new ones. I've not had this one before, but a little bit annoyed because I need a battery. And there's only a pound cheaper than the other ones. You just hold the button. See, that's a fair way off of the fence. It's got to be two foot or so off the fence there. Still beeping. It's got to be three foot off the fence there. So we can just check the level on that daily. We've got spare batteries. So, but not only have we got, so if they get through this fence, which they're strip grazing against, they've got two more fences to get through because they've got a, peri a perimeter, perimeter fence as well. So they've got this fence. And you can't see, but just laying on the edge there, there's another fence that goes around. So, which is a good width. So that tractor and a half. Wide. I think that'd be more than enough. I don't know if you can see it too well, but on that dike side, um, I'll scroll in. Just about see another fence. It goes all the way around on the dike side. There's a fence post. There's a fair width off of that one. So if they do get out of this one, they're still going to be retained there but hopefully once they get used to eating they'll be moving that way and this fence goes a fair way down and we'll just move it a few feet a day or twice a week or whatever we need to do so let's see how we get on two rigid galloways one there one a little bit further up i guarantee none of them have ever worked walked this bit of saw before let alone graze fodder beat here in the whole of history be very amazed if that's before that's happened. So just walking along here, see loads for them to go out. And they have had a little bit of this as their dinner so they know what they're eating. But what we've also given, because this is going to become, look at the hoof, hoof prints already. This is going to become really, really, really muddy. Really quickly. So what we've done Yep, no, they haven't gone out. We had some wheat here, so a bit of wheat stubble. So, from to lay back on, it goes all the way to the dike side there. So, from to lay back on, they've got something. They're still going to get muddy, but not as muddy as the bare ground. That's just a few things on here they can eat. Oh, they do look well. I'll keep you posted how this goes. Oh, you can probably see the back fence. A little bit better there, so. Fair distance back, two different energizers. If one goes down, there's still another one. <coughs> More worried about a deer running through it in the middle of the night or something stupid like that. Taking one of the fences out. Oh, it takes both out and they're gonna wander through two lots of fencing. Fingers crossed. Mix in here, short horn types. That's a short horn there. Hereford cross, rigid. You've got sort of 
probably a dairy or a dairy cross. More short horn crosses, more Hereford crosses, proper ridgets. Quite like these, but really excited to see what these are going to do for us. And then some Angus cross short horns and some short horn cross Anguses. So this is their barn for the year. I've just hung around with them for a little while. Look at the breath. Ah, getting colder. Nice and relaxed. They've had a good belly fill for a good few hours, so they've all got to sleep shortly. That there might be a steer that's going to eat well. That red one's definitely a steer in front. Yeah. 